Hi everybody, I'm Pastor Allen, and this is the virtual church of the disillusioned, depressed, and downtrodden. Our um, talk this time around is entitled, A Blessing Called Disillusionment. A Blessing. That wasn't the original title, I'm going to tell you about that, but that is what we are calling it. A Blessing Called disillusionment. It's so nice to have you aboard. We've got some exciting messages coming up this year. As I record this, 2016 has just begun. Our next message, we're going to talk about seven things to have a very exciting year. And of course, no matter what time of the year you uh, view the message, you can start just then. It's never too late, unless you're on your deathbed. It's never too late to make positive changes in your life. The same goes for me. So we're on this uh, path together, and uh, I ask you to subscribe to the channel, tell your friends about this channel. Um, we're going to have a good time as we um, grow and experience together. Well, you know, I was surprised when I looked up the word disillusionment as I began to prepare this talk. When I went to Webster's, I found out that the word disillusionment is described in positive terms. This is how they uh, describe it. To cause to stop having a mistaken belief that something is good, valuable, or true. The act of freeing oneself from an illusion. That definition really blew me away. Now, granted, the list of uh, related words are not so positive. Bafflement, betrayed hope. I like this one. Blasted expectation. <laughs> yeah, it just knocks your socks off, you know. Cruel disappointment, let down. Frustration. Discontentment, rejection, fallen countenance. That's another good one. <laughs> fallen countenance. You can just see the person melting before you in disillusionment. Setback and sore disappointment. But the amazing thing that jumped before my eyes is that in its essence, in its essence, disillusionment is a good thing. It's a good thing for you and me to experience. My message was originally titled, A Disease Called Disillusionment. And the more I thought about it, the more I thought about what this program should be called, what this message should be called, I knew I had to call it A Blessing Called Disillusionment. It's really cool when I have one thing in mind and then the Lord leads me in a different direction with a little help from Webster's in this case I'll admit that um, our virtual church here is partly for the disillusioned but now I have a greater understanding of what the uh, positives involved with that are and it didn't all come from Webster's by the way now my prejudice my bias if you will is that God wants to lead us all into an understanding and build us up. Yeah, just like, just like building blocks. He wants to build our lives and make something very positive. It doesn't matter how lousy your life is right now, how many years you have wasted away, you can begin to have an exciting, wonderful life but not if you keep doing the same thing over and over and over. We know what that's the definition of. Now, the cynic will say, yeah, I'm disillusioned by the whole God thing, you know? Religion. So I freed myself from believing in that stuff. It's just about money and control for those preachers. The wise person will be extra careful in what they assign to the trash bin of their minds. 
you really have to make sure this is a very important decision if you say well as the scripture says the fool the fool says in his heart there is no God so we don't want to be a fool so we really want to explore you know if we set out to learn a craft we have books we have tests that we have to go through we have to please the uh, professor we have to uh, get a high mark and we strive to do that well it's that important with our spiritual search it's that important we can't just come uh, up with a blase opinion except what somebody uh, on TV is saying or what have you we have to search for ourselves uh, I said uh, the last time we were together test and see the real scripture is taste taste and see that the Lord is good it's a worthy exploration you want to go on a on a on an adventure you want to go on a on a, a, a expedition go on a spiritual expedition and uh, you might find something amazing if you're if you're open open to the whole thing so now there let's just call this guy Joe Attitude all right we know Joe Attitude he probably lives in Queens or someplace like that <laughs> uh, he will toss aside any uh, search for God he'll say it's all fake it's all BS Joe may not feel that way though when he's gasping for his last breath or some other tragedy happens we shouldn't have to wait for a tragedy to happen before we start to consider God you know one day we don't mention God except maybe in a derogatory way then we have cancer and all of a sudden well I'm trusting God whatever God's will is but we didn't say that before and how soon we can forget we can be uh, experiencing something terrible and God brings us through it come and in two or three months down the road if not sooner we forgot the whole thing we forgot it and we don't want that to happen we want to learn from our experiences and we want to uh, always thank God for every breath that he gives us and every opportunity he gives us every day should be opened like a precious gift Harry Harrison said that <laughs> from CBS FM and WABC music radio you gotta remember I'm a New Yorker so I remember those great New York City jocks and being a radio guy especially um, you see the pisser here for guys like Joe is believing in Jesus requires faith that's the F word that agnostics most hate faith and that can be a stumbling block for just about anybody for Joe and, and for all of us really what is faith what's the definition well I'm not gonna go to Webster's uh, for this definition I'm going to the God who made all those Webster's Miriam and all those Daniel and all those Webster's God made them uh, God inspired the Apostle Paul to define faith in his letter to the Hebrews you'll find this uh, I believe the first verse in uh, chapter 11 of Hebrews in the New Testament of the Bible uh, man divided the uh, letters from Paul and from others into chapters and verses but it's really just one long letter and this is how uh, Paul with the inspiration of the Holy Spirit guiding him this is how he devi defines faith faith is being sure of what we hope for and certain of what we do not see holy roadblock Batman how is Joe attitude ever gonna put down the bottle of bud or the PlayStation 4 or stop watching internet porn long enough to ponder that kind of a truth and the answer is I don't know you know <laughs> that's a, that is really a very heavy question because some people seem spiritually inclined and some people don't and um, that's for God to work out um, some people uh, and I think maybe that would be you watching me right now you have a hunger in your gut for God you may be tired of all the BS from religion you're disillusioned you may be depressed and there's various forms of depression that's a whole other message um, 
you, uh, you may be downtrodden. You may feel that you've gotten a bad deal, a bad break. Um, but there is a God of hope. And we're talking a little bit about that uh, as we talk about disillusionment today. Um, by the way, we all have bad habits that pull us away from meeting our God-given potential. The reason I wanted to open up the door just a, a crack to the topic of faith now in a, a study about disillusionment is to make this point. People will hide behind anger, resentment, laziness, disillusionment as an excuse to disavow the existence of God. Um, you see, once you uh, come to an understanding that there is a God, you have that oh crap moment. <laughs> I'll clean it up a little bit. You have that oh crap moment that now I'm accountable to this God. So somebody, I, some people I feel like they like to stay ignorant. They like to stay <laughs> uninformed about spiritual things because they, they love their sin so much. They don't want, uh, they don't want another, uh, they don't want something coming in to ruin their their lifestyle so that's why they tend to invent these uh, personal designer spiritual packages that don't require them lifting up their hands and saying thank you for another day please forgive me of my sins cleanse me with your most precious blood Jesus I blew it again I blew it again I know I did uh, it's not the devil's fault it's nobody's fault but my own I blew it and I need your forgiveness they don't want to do that so they uh, you know, they come up with something that requires very little from them, really, and they get to feel spiritual, but it's it, it's not worth 10 cents. It's not worth 10 cents, and that's not being rude about someone's belief package. Um, telling the truth about something, speaking um, the, the words of God, the, 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 the um, pull of the Holy Spirit is a good thing. And it will offend people. There's no doubt about it. It will offend people. It offends our flesh. It offends our sense of that we figured it all out and we're relying on our own understanding and our our own strength. Um, disillusionment is a good thing when it frees us from a mistaken belief. However, don't make the mistake of casting aside a relationship with Christ, which can only happen by faith. In fact, the good book says faith is a gift from God. See, it's nothing that we conjure up. It's nothing that we uh, manufacture in and of ourselves. We have to seek the gift, though. We have to be willing to seek the gift. Uh, he gives us the capacity to receive the gift. He designs us to be receptive to faith, but he does not make a mandatory or involuntary, uh, involuntary action out of it, I don't think. I don't think Bin Laden was saved because everybody is saved. But I think uh, if at the time those guns were aimed at him, no matter what he did, and I know he did horrendous things, if, if when they pointed those guns at him, he said, Jesus, forgive me of my sins then I think he was forgiven and that would blow some people away but we remember the thief on the cross some of you that that know the scriptures know that the thief on the cross he didn't have time to be baptized he just said remember me when you come into your kingdom as Jesus was dying on the cross as well and he said that uh, you will be with me in paradise today you will be and that's deathbed salvation if there ever was deathbed salvation now let's zero in on disillusionment. I think many of you view disillusionment, like I did most of my life, as a completely negative experience. The wife may say, hey, I thought you meant those vows you spoke on our wedding day. I thought our kids meant something to you, the, the family life that we have. I thought all that would be too important for you to behave like you did. She had an image of the man she married. Now she sees there is a whole other side to this man. People become disillusioned in their jobs. 
um, or their careers. Better to have a career than a job, right? But a job will do when you need one. Uh, people become disillusioned by political leaders. We talked about that in our message, Hot Button Issues. Make sure you check that one out. Our representatives, I mean, wow, they, they seem to care more about themselves than they do their constituents. They will stay steadfast in stubborn opinions, even if they know it hurts our country. Children become disillusioned by their parents. Um, you know, a lot of parents don't really parent. Um, maybe we uh, really blow it and our kids see us blow it. And um, so that's, uh, that's very, uh, well, it certainly doesn't serve us well when we try to say, do this, do that. Uh, and they don't see uh, us living a godly life before them. And nobody's perfect, but they don't see that. So um, they, uh, they challenge us much more readily than if we had brought them up in a real, real uh, God environment, uh, 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 an atmosphere where God and the things of God were reverenced. Um, also, I want to talk about uh, sickness. This is something you just can't pass over lightly. You know, people become disillusioned um, when they are uh, feeling uh, sick, when someone they love has a terrible disease. Uh, sickness is a tough thing. I don't know if you watch those commercials from the Shriners Children's Hospital or St. Jude's Children's Hospital. Sometimes uh, St. Jude's runs that 30 minute infomercial and I sometimes watch and I, I can be a basket case pretty much by the time that that is over. Some of the kids will be healed uh, from this terrible cancer, some of them won't. These are things that um, I don't have an answer for. See, being a Christian doesn't mean you have an answer for everything. It means that you come to an understanding that God is good all the time and he will work it out. We also have an understanding that we live in a, a sinful world that blasphemes God, that uh, does not reverence the things, the holiness of God, the things that are holy. We, we magnify and justify and glorify sin in a way that we never have before. It's all over our shows. It's all over our uh, music. Music that, um, that basically um, gives the middle finger to God. That's, that's one way to put it. And so we have this wonderment why we don't have the blessing of God. And while in some countries we see uh, miracles taking place, great things, people being healed, and we don't see so, that so much in America, but we have... Uh, we have the need for what, what is called, obviously, repentance in America. But when someone is sick, um, we need to have compassion. And we, we don't need to judge them. Um, if someone is sitting with their spouse who's all hooked up to tubes in the intensive care unit, um, we don't need to start preaching at them, but just love on them. And um, we give that to God. We, we, we take it to prayer and, and we ask for that healing, but we can't put God in a box when it comes to healing. He heals when he wants to heal. And uh, I believe that any child that leaves this earth goes right into the presence of God, straight into the presence of God. I don't understand why terrible things happen to children. I if I were God, would send the angels, dispatch the angels, and put an end to that. I wouldn't let it happen. I wouldn't let a child be tortured or what have you. But we always have to remember we are a sin-soaked society. And um, that comes at a cost. There are consequences to our thumbing our nose at God. There is so much hope in the scriptures. Um, there are so many verses that talk about hope. Um, got a few of them here for you. Um, we, um, we find also in Hebrews, the book of Hebrews, chapter 6, verse 19. We have this hope as an anchor for the soul, firm 
and secure. It's a great song by a Christian, contemporary Christian artist from the 80s. I used to play this song on the radio all the time when I was uh, playing contemporary Christian music uh, in uh, upstate, uh, further upstate New York, and it was broadcast in seven states, this, uh, this uh, station. Uh, the Anchor Holds by Ray Boltz. I'm sure it's right here on YouTube. The Anchor Holds. Put that song on, sit back in your chair, close your eyes, and let it minister to you. It's a powerful song from Ray Boltz. Um, in the uh, New Testament, the book of Romans, which comes after Acts, after the Gospels, um, Romans chapter 8, verse 24, for in this hope, and, and the hope is when we come into a second birth, a relationship with Christ, when we're saved, uh, it says, hope that is seen is not hope at all. Who hopes for what he already has? But if we hope for what we do not have already, we wait for it. Oh, and then he uses the P word. <laughs> Patiently. Patiently. God grant me um, patience and I need it right now. That kind of thing. <laughs> that even confuses Winston back there. Um, yeah, we are an instant society. Fast food, um, fast internet, fast everything, and we don't like to wait for things. But the, um, the scripture says, be still and know that I am God. Be still means we have to take time, hopefully every day if we can, uh, Bible talks about going into our inner room or closet. It's great if you have a place that can be just the, the place that you spend with God, your little altar. You spend time there, you read the scriptures, and you pray, and then you be still and give ch uh, God a chance to answer. Let the Holy Spirit minister to you, and he will reveal himself to be truth it may get to the point where your your time alone with God it won't be such a struggle because you'll start to really enjoy it you'll start to feel the presence of God and uh, and he will minister to your soul any sincere seeker I believe that is uh, what he will um, do um, there's a verse that says when you seek me this is God speaking now through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit through the writer um, when you seek me with your whole heart, that's when you'll find me. <laughs> when you seek me with your whole heart. When I'm more important than anybody or anything you like to do. When I am uh, most important to you, that's when you'll find me. And I know as I look back in my life, and I remembered that scripture I did, I realized I had never done that, not really. I had never s sought God with my whole heart. And so I was freelance, <laughs> doing it my way. And uh, we're going to talk about, in a future message, we're going to talk about what is n known in the scripture as the potter's wheel and how we like to jump off the wheel. You know, if we're on the Ferris wheel, we're on the top of the Ferris wheel, we don't jump off, we wait to be let off. You know, the man, the authority says, okay, you can get off now. But we don't just jump off the wheel. <laughs> well, we do as Christians. We're always jumping off the wheel. So that's going to be another message that we're going to have here. We're also going to talk about the curious case of Bishop Carlton Pearson, a man who walked away from the faith, one of the finest Pentecostal preachers um, that has ever preached the gospel now preaches a whole different gospel and uh, we're going to talk about that in a future message but in our next message we're going to have seven things that you and i can do throughout the year and the year starts whenever you hear the message uh, that can make positive change in our lives 
We don't have to settle for second best. We don't have to have a substandard life. We don't have to waste another year. We can begin to see positive change. So see disillusionment. See that as a positive thing and that you have, uh, the, the lie has been exposed. You know, you're not going to settle for crap Christianity. You're not going to settle for man-made Christianity. And you sure as hell aren't going to settle for some man-made religion. Because when you're, when you're down there on the ground and you say, oh, this is the big one, that man-made religion isn't going to matter at all. It's not going to sustain you. It's not going to sustain you um, surrendering our will to God's will more and more every day. That is real bread. That is real sustainment. Please uh, feel free to write me. I would love to uh, love to uh, get your comments. Uh, Pastor Allen fifty six at yahoo.com. Pastor Allen fifty six at yahoo.com. All right, I'm going to make this a great year. We're going to partner together. So many exciting things to tell you about, things I'd like to see come to fruition. I hope you have dreams. Don't let the world pee on your dreams. <laughs> you go for it. This is your year. A big God bless you. Bye-bye, everybody.